Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to today's class of DDP. And in this class, we're going to be learning all about how to make holes in Fusion 360. But first, let's learn some basic vocabulary so we can all know what we're talking about and be on the same page. So this is an example of what we're going to be dealing with and what they look like and the kinds of uh, language and how it's written. So you'll see these formulas here, and this describes the physical characteristics of the holes we're making and to uh, fit the kinds of screws that are going to go in there. So first, some general de definitions. Um, when, let's just say this is a block of wood here, when the hole that we make goes all the way through that block, it is called through which is a pretty simple concept. Um, clearance is how large enough to allow screw head and driver to pass through. So that is a variable that needs to be considered when making your hole. And a blind is that a hole, does, a hole that does not go all the way through the block, but only partway. There are three types of holes that we're gonna make in Fusion 360. There is simple, and simple does not have a countersink or a counterbore. And then there's the countersink. A countersink is the, an example of the second screw in section A in the bottom here. Um, it's the one that has an angled top head that looks like an inverted triangle with the top cut off. Um, and it has the threaded bottom. So this angled top here is called a countersink. And um, the hole that it makes is represented right above it. And the hole, the concentric hole that's above the actual hole that's in the center is slanted. All right. It's a slanted inner circle. And that uh, allows this type of screw to fit in comfortable. So when we see, see countersink, we want to think triangle and angled head. Now, the next one is called counterbore. Counterbore is this rectangular um, top part that's in the first hole that we see. Uh, and this is represented by just a um, concentric circle. You could, we could tell here, um, I want to tell you the difference between a countersink and a counterbore hole. We can tell by the shading here that it's angled. And with this one, there's no shading on that, um, that first concentric circle. So um, we know that it's not angled in any way, but it's just a hole within a hole, all right? So uh, this top part is represented by a sort of rectangular U, okay? That looks like a sink. So um, although this is called countersink, don't mean to con confuse you, but counterbore is this rectangular part, countersink is the triangular. And um, simple is simply the absence of countersinks or counterbores. So the third example here is a simple hole. Now, the next thing we're gonna talk about is tapped and tapped means that it has threading on the outside. An example of that would be the second hole, which is the countersink. And those uh, lines that are on the body of it are the threading. There's also something else. Um, there are flat, flat bottoms and angular bottoms, which we can see in the first and the last one. So now let's talk about uh, what it says in these little formulas and the annotations that accompany these holes. We have these symbols here and what it's talking about. So these symbols here, there's only four of them, all right? Uh, there's going to be the diameter symbol, which uh, tells us how wide the holes, the, at least if, if it's a simple hole, then what the diameter of the entire thing is gonna be. If it is has a counter bore or a counter sink, you're gonna get two diameters, okay? One diameter is for the bottom part, and the second diameter is for the counter sink or counter bore part, which is the upper part. Um, depth is how, uh, how far down it goes. And if you have a simple hole, you're gonna get one depth and one diameter. But if you have a counter bore, um, you're gonna get a depth uh, that tells you how far the upper part, which is that regular rectangular part, goes down as well as the diameter for it. In a countersink, you're going to get you're going to get the diameter, but you're going to get an angle instead of the depth. 
All right, and we'll get into that. So, but we only need to know these four sing, uh, symbols, diameter, counterbore, countersink, and depth. Okay, so let's take a look at, um, see if there's anything else that you need to see here. Okay, so let's move on to this here. And this is the actual assignment. Again, we have our symbols here. And what it's asking you to do here is to make a block that is 12 inches wide, three inches tall, and two inches deep. And we're going to make this block out of glass. And we're then going to uh, make 11 points, okay, across that are equally spaced by an inch. And each of these points is going to be a screw or not a screw a hole <laughs> a hole for a screw to go in so that's more accurate so we're first going to place them um equal them out and get them in the right spot and then we're going to uh create the hole according to what kind it is and we're going to read these descriptions here that tell us whether it's a counterbore or a countersink a diameter uh, what the diameter is what the depth is and all these and just plug it in and create these different types of holes all right, so this is the top view. This is the side view. So let's get started um, with the Fusion 360. And we're going to create our glass block first. So I have a sketch open. What I'm going to do is I'm going to open this um, the rectangle thing and I'm going to drag this out. I'm going to make that three and this 12. Set it. Fit it in. Okay. Let's just move that into the picture a little more. And I'm going to finish the sketch where I'm now going to add the depth, which is going to be two. Great. And now let's turn this on here. Now, what we're going to do next is we're going to create a sketch on this face. We're going to do two things. We're going to create a center line that our holes are gonna go on. And we're gonna do that by creating a construction line. Construction lines are lines that we use to help us line up um, different geography or geometry rather, um, but we don't want it to be part of our actual design. So it's sort of an invisible line that's there to help guide us. And on our sketch palette, we'll see line type. And this first thing here is construction. We're going to select that. And whatever we draw with over here will then be in the construction mode. I'm going to choose line by hitting L. And I'm going to go into the center. This triangle tells me that it's in the center. And I'm going to drag a line across. So I hit the other side, set that, I'm gonna click okay. And now I'm gonna to go to create and go to my points. And I'm gonna make 11 of them. I don't like how that one is larger than the others. I'm going to get rid of that one, okay? I'm gonna go back to my point. And it just locks right onto the line. Okay, I'm going to just dimension these first and then I'll um, add any more than I need later. So I'm going to hit D for my dimensioning tool. You could tell that it's the dimensioning tool by the icon um, right there in the arrow. And I'm going to dimension it from the first dot to the side here. I'm going to put a one there. And then I'm going to start dimensioning these to each other. And how many are we missing? One, two, three. Just one. Okay, so we're gonna go back to our point. 
add another one here, and then we're going to dimension that. And let's see if it's dimensioned over here. Yes, so it's all good. So I'm gonna, now that I know that this is all dimension, I actually want to uncheck dimension so they go away. And now I'm gonna focus on the appearance of it. Wait, let's, I'm gonna do that, let's see here. Okay, so we're gonna finish the sketch. All right, we're gonna to go to modify appearance. And here, let's bring this up. I'm gonna close this. I'm gonna open that. Okay, so I'm gonna go and I'm gonna find my glass. Here it is. And I'm gonna to go to smooth and I'm just gonna choose the first one. And I'm also making sure that um, it applies to bodies and not faces and that looks good. I'm just gonna hit enter and set that. And now we have our glass box. Okay, and we're gonna start our work. So the first thing that we're going to be doing is making our first hole and it's a very simple one. So it's the simplest one. Uh, we're going to uh, go to our whole function and it is create, it's right here, but um, I'm going to just hit H, the shortcut, and this pops up. Now, when I say simple, it means that it's not a counterbore or a countersink, and the counterbore is the second option and the countersink is the third. Um, it's simple, which means that it doesn't have any threading on it as well. So it could be simple and have threading, but this isn't tapped. And then lastly, it's got a flat bottom and not an angled bottom. So I'm gonna switch that. And um, I also want to select where I'm gonna make my hole. Cool, so now that's all there and I'm simply gonna plug in the dimension. So we know that it goes through. So over here in, distance, we want all, and that's gonna set it to the length of whatever it is it's in. And we could see now that that is, okay, that that is now that length. And we just need to um, put in the diameter, which it is 0.25. So we're gonna hit okay. And what we have here, once we hit enter and set up, set, set it, is our very first hole. All right, now if this goes away, the way that we get it back is we go to our browser, we go to sketches and we put the eye back on there. And now we have our sketch points and our construction line and our first hole. And we're just gonna keep adding them one by one. But I'm going to continue on in the next video. And I think this is enough for this one. So I will see you there, take care.